Hi, my name is Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this presentation of my piece, Kikeli Rubin. I'm going to jump right into it. The main three subheadings I will be analyzing this piece under are harmony, rhythm, and melody. Jump right into the harmony. So the first progression you hear, uh, progression one, which features in the introduction, section A, has two chord sets within its progression. I'm going to illustrate that very quickly on the keyboard here for yourselves. The first chord, G sharp 6, 9, second chord, B flat 6, 9, third chord, A minor 7, sharp 5, followed by a a D minor 11. So I've analyzed these four chords in modes of the C major scale. So the first three chords are C Aeolian, and then that final D minor 11 is that C Ionian, the second degree in C Ionian. Um, so I've analyzed this portion of the harmony in, with the kind of technique of modal mixture. So I've used modal mixture in both chord sets. So to just repeat that second set of the progression. So we've ended the first progression with that D minor 11, and then we're gonna go down a semitone quite conveniently to a C sharp six nine, an E flat six nine, and then down to the D minor 11 again, and then up to the A minor seven sharp five. And then again, we're gonna quite conveniently go down a semitone to that G sharp six nine. Please note just on the right hand here, this voicing here, which is essentially a triad of an F sus2 or a C sus4, it's consistent throughout this progression. Just something to note, um, which again, as you can see, as we've analyzed through the modes of C and F, there's definitely a connection there. In this piece, or at least this portion of the piece, I wanted to create a se sense of equilibrium. So as you can see from my uh, rainbow of equilibrium, the chords here, G sharp major and C sharp major, they are a fourth apart, that B flat major, E flat major in green, a fourth apart, the A minor and the D minor, a fourth apart there. And they kind of share that quality. And they, again, they share their tonality as well. So just something I, I'd, I'd like to illustrate, um, that kind of sense of equilibrium, which is very quickly uh, destroyed in this section section, which is the break. Um, it's the very kind of uh, off time, odd time, kind of jarring, jarring uh, break. So I use that similar uh, triad in the right hand, which features on many instruments in the ensemble at the time. Um, and then I essentially just threw any old notes. That's not necessarily true, but I, I put these root notes underneath to kind of create a real sense of dissonance. Their similarity with the previous progression is that they um, have that same interval. So they kind of have the same intervallic movement. So that C sharp up to that E flat is a major two, similar to the first progression, and then down a minor two, or a minor second, I should say. That E is only, uh, it's in brackets because it's only really a passing note. So I couldn't really do a modal mixture analysis or kind of write this modally as there's no real way of doing it. It's more, more just a non-functional kind of portion of the harmony doesn't really go anywhere nice. It Each chord doesn't really inform the previous chord. It's quite chromatic. So that's why I kind of consider it non-functional. Moving quickly on to the rhythm. So the rhythm contains most of the motifs in the piece, um, which is kind of this, the main motif, which features the very beginning of the marimba. So if you hear me here, three, four, da, 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 da. So that's just one kind of bar, at least the first bar of it. Um, so it's a two rhythm followed by a three rhythm, and it repeats after five bars. So we're in four, four. So it kind of creates this jarring kind of rhythm. Uh, again, you can't really find the, the, the one, and that's the point. So this kind of um, rhythmic motif or this kind of, uh, rhythm technique, I would say would be kind of rhythmic displacement or phasing, which I will describe a little bit more detail now. So. Phasing here, as you can see, is what happens when you play the same portion of music, just displaced. So, as you can see here, the xylophone enters, but it's displaced back three semitones. So this illustration here is the fullness of the phasing, where this is the point at which most uh, instruments are phasing with each other. The only instruments that are playing the same rhythm are the synth and the marimba. Moving quickly on to odd time, which is the second technique I use in the rhythm portion of this comp composition. 
Um, so as you can see, there is a 4-4 bar followed by another 4-4 bar followed by a 6-4 bar. So this repeats four times. The second time has a more melodic feature to it, but mainly it's the same rhythm that da 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 da. It's only just very slightly more uh, syncopated just to throw you off a little bit more. So it's a five beat compound rhythm within two bars of 4-4 four, four, and then a bar of 6-4. Um, one last kind of note on rhythm would be this metric modulation, which features very quickly um, just towards the end of the piece. It's essentially a metric modulation um, of one bar of three quarter time. So it's a crotchet equals dotted crotchet. So it uh, modulates from 120 BPM down to 180 BPM for a bar and then right up to 120 BPM. So that's across the entire ensemble. Um, just moving quickly on to melody. So the melody really in this piece is just this, to support the harmony and the rhythm. Um, this is the first melody which features on cello. It's 16 bars long and it's a long 16 bars. Um, again, there's no real sense of phrasing really um, unless you you know extrapolate it like this or reduce it like this, I should say, um, over 16 bars. You can kind of see a sense of phrase, but otherwise it's just there to support the harmony, give a bit of texture and a bit of flavor. Um, unlike Motif 2, which um, has a little bit more rhythmic content and kind of has a little bit more syncopation, it follows the groove a little bit better. Again, it just supports the harmony. Um, motif 3, which is a 16-bar melody, again, is played on bowed xylophone. I'll go into a little bit more depth on bowing xylophone and bowing mallet instruments in my arrangement kind of analysis. Um, yeah, it's essentially a development of the first melody only. It's a bit more sparse due to the higher resonance of the, the xylophone when it's being bowed. I had to give it a bit more space. This melody, which is motif 3, um, it's developed into motif 3B, where and by using the technique of two bows simultaneously, um, the xylophone, I have basically um, harmonized this melody. And then additionally, there's a call and response heard on the cello. Okay, moving on to the final little chat here. So the arrangement uh, for mallets, um, it's a bit of an extended arrangement as it wasn't covered in the class notes. Um, I chose both the marimba and the xylophone. Um, because I found marimba duets especially really appealing when you have these rhythms kind of phasing in and out of each other. I found that very, very nice. Um, they're great for playing rhythmic motifs and they're especially reliable because the kinds of people that are playing marimbas are percussionists. They're gonna be able to play complex rhythms. So me who's common, or, or, or I'm, I'm, I'm quite often roasting um, players alive with my rhythms as my tutors have said. Um, I just thought it would be a little bit more appropriate to, to use an instrument that's made for a percussionist. Um, I've used different mallet beaters, so I've used soft mallets and hard mallets, which are quite a common feature, and then I've used what I call sticks, which I suggest are, can be used, drum rods can be used, but again, it's entirely up to the performer's preference. And just really quickly, just wrap everything up, um, I'm going to run through just a few of those things that I described above um, in the piece. but. Uh, Ultimately, um, it's the piece is kind of to create a sense of you know being lost or having confusion. Hence, the name of the piece, Kekeli Ruan, which is essentially the word confusion in um, Indonesian, and it actually contains five syllables, which is quite fitting for the compound rhythm of five beats. There, um, I'm just going to quickly move over here to the actual piece of music. And I'll just demonstrate very quickly um, the kind of things I was talking about. So I'll just demonstrate that first rhythm, which is heard on the marimba and the piano, and also the harmony is evident. So the harmony of that first progression is heard. So this is just that C minor leading into the first progression. So that G sharp into that B flat, and you can hear that first melody on the cello. That A minor seven sharp five, and then that D minor eleven. So that's just kind of um, recapping on everything I kind of just spoke about there. I'll try and demonstrate quickly the break here. So this is the break here. Um, again, just to dem demonstrate how the break sounds. Again, very jarring. No real sense of the one other than maybe the snare hits. That's pretty much the break. And that's kind of it for my analysis. I just wanted to illustrate a few of those points um, musically and visually while they were kind of happening in real time. 
Uh, thank you so much for listening. Um, I appreciate you taking the time to check out my presentation of my piece, Kekele Ron. Thank you very much.